Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday service. Let us pray. Almighty God, you speak to us in so many ways. Help us in our worship today to hear your voice and know it is you. Speak to us in the silence, through scripture and by the Spirit. Speak through others and through your creation, through images, experiences, music and encounters. So speak, Lord, and help us to listen. Amen. We sing our first hymn, I come with joy, a child of God. Linda will now bring us our Bible reading, followed by the talk. The reading is taken from John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come with me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the town where Andrew and Peter lived. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one whom Moses wrote about in the book of the law, and whom the prophets also wrote about. He is Jesus, the son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, answered Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him, he said about him, Here is the real Israelite. There is nothing false in him. Nathaniel asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you when you rung the fig tree before Philip called you. Teacher, answered Nathaniel, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, Do you believe just because I told you I saw you when you rung the fig tree? You will see much greater things than this. And he said to them, I am telling you the truth, you will see 
heaven open, God's angels coming up and going down on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few years ago, I went to Oxford to support a friend who was being licensed to a new post. And as I was robing up with other clergy in the vestry in the Cathedral Church of Oxford, the former Bishop of Warrington, Bishop David Jennings, walked through the crowd up to me. And he said, hello, Andrew. How are you? Lovely to see you. And how is Jo? Is she still singing? And how is Isabel and Gregory? And tell me, what's happening in St Michael's and Holy Trinity? And during that conversation, I felt affirmed. I felt special. Bishop David did not just remember my name, even though he knew many, many, many clergy, but he remembered detail about my life. I'm sure we've all had times when we've been made to feel special. And hopefully there have been times when we've made other people feel special. In our Bible reading today, we are introduced to Nathaniel, who at first was quite cynical about Jesus. He seemed to look down on him. But after meeting Jesus, how we thought of Jesus changed. He himself felt special and he saw that Jesus was special. Philip goes up to Nathaniel, excited. I have met the one, the one we have been waiting for for centuries, the one who's going to restore Israel. Nathaniel isn't convinced. He comes from Nazareth. Who special comes out of Nazareth? If it was today, he may have even thought of Jesus as being a woolly back. But then, after going up to meet Jesus, Jesus turns to him and he says, I know you. You were sitting underneath that tree. Something happened in that meeting. Nathaniel was no longer looking down on Jesus because of his humble beginnings. But he too, like Philip, recognised him, believed him to be the special one, the Messiah, the one that they've been waiting for for many centuries. In the season of Epiphany, each week there is a Bible reading which tells the story of someone seeing Jesus as being more than the carpenter from Nazareth. It begins with the wise men who travel from the east to visit the one rumoured to be the king of the Jews. As they approach this humble child in humble surroundings, they see something in him. They experience something. And so they give him special gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And then last week, the reading was about Jesus' baptism. Jesus was baptised by John the Baptist, along with many people. But Jesus' baptism was different. It was special because the presence of God came upon him. And from the cloud, people heard the voice saying, This is my son, of whom I am pleased. Listen to him. And then today, we read the story of Nathaniel, feeling cynical because of Jesus' humble beginnings. But after coming into his presence and speaking with him, he recognises him as being more than the carpenter from Nazareth, as being the Messiah, the one they've been waiting for for so long. The Bible reading today teaches us that Jesus makes us feel special. Most of us feel cynical and have questions about our faith and about who Jesus is. But Jesus 
changes us by making us, making us feel special. And also, we are reminded that Jesus knows the detail of our life like no one else, because he knew us before our creation. And so, feeling affirmed, be made to feel special by Jesus and our faith, we are challenged, just like Philip, to naturally, out of our own enthusiasm for our faith and our belief, in Jesus being the special one, to go up to other people and say, come and see. Come and see the one who will make you feel special. Come and see the one who knows more about you than anyone else. Come and see. Amen. God of all, your love is deeper than we can imagine, spreading wider than we can dream. At the start of Christian Unity Week, we pray for all church leaders and those with the power to influence the unity of our churches, both in this country and worldwide. Inspire them and us with your love and bless them with a vision of a Christian community where all are welcome and diversity is embraced, where the integrity of all is respected and none are diminished, and where our common ground is recognised as sacred space. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, you are greater than we can fathom, surpassing all our expectations. We pray for our church community here in Orton and Bickerstaff. May we create a space where each person feels loved, respected and valued. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, you are wider than our understanding, beyond our vision. Thank you for the many different ways in which you are respect, represented, depicted and described by the different denominations of our faith. Thank you for the other churches we share our community with. Christchurch and St Mary's. We pray for our common work and ask your blessing on our shared mission. May our work honour you and reflect your care for the vulnerable, weak and powerless in our midst, recognising the contribution that they have for our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, your compassion reaches further than our human limitations. Your mercy is greater than we can tell. We pray for all those within our community or known to us personally who are ill, recovering from accident or operations, or in particular need of our prayers this week. May they know you at the centre of their situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, your love reaches further than we could imagine, beyond even death. Hold all these people in your transforming, life-changing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our next hymn, Christ is the one who calls.
I'd like to highlight some notices. The first notice is about the Lent groups this year. We're going to be following an eight week course called The Wellbeing Journey. There is a book to accompany the course, so whether you can join us online or not, then let us know if you'd like a copy of the book. It looks at our physical, our emotional and our spiritual well-being. And there are a choice of four groups for us to join. There is details on uh, the, the website, but also I've emailed out uh, details of the course to those whose email I have. We're going to be joining Christchurch with the course, so it's an opportunity for for the two churches of Alden and Bickerstaff to come together uh, in fellowship, but also in reflection uh, during Lent as well. For the gallery next week, I'd like you to send in any pictures of activity or scenery that you enjoy while on your walk. But also, we haven't had many pets lately. So, if you'd like to see uh, more pictures of Boris, then there'll be more pictures of Boris next week. But also, uh, let's see some pictures of your pets as well. And now, we're going to enjoy this week's gallery. Hilary will bring us our special prayer. Christ our light. Your light rises in our darkness and assures us that you are present with us and that your powerful closeness to us transforms our fear into hope. As your church, may we spread a contagion of hope from heart to heart. Protect all your selfless servants who continue to serve the needs of the most vulnerable by both hands and heart. Give our elected leaders wisdom of heart and decision-making that the common good of our human family may be achieved and the gift of each person's human dignity respected. May the, love, may the fire of love 
energy and resilience burn within our hearts so that we may give witness to the mystery of your resurrected life among us and within us. Amen. Yes, no. We sing our final hymn, God is working his purpose out. Let us pray. Lord, what we have learned this day, help us remember. Teach us to recognise your voice. Teach us how to see you in our lives and encounters. Help us to give others space so that they may hear you too. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>